Now, you know, they had to, when we first at 16 seconds they had uh, uh, a couple of fouls to give, and so we wanted to get up the court, have all our shooters uh, on the court, and we did for the first two fouls. Uh, then we had 4.6 seconds. I thought that if uh, we put CJ in, uh, that they would sub and put a big in. Uh, but CJ is our best vertical threat to the rim. And so with Q coming off the double pin down, he should be able to make a play to the rim and not settle what we didn't want him to do, settle for the jumper. Uh, get to the rim, take the last shot. Worst case scenario, we go to overtime. If they block it, uh, we got a chance for a block or a foul. Uh, but about you know four or five times this year, we've tried to get him comfortable um, putting the ball at the rim for you know for that roll guy. But the big has to roll hard, and he has to be a vertical threat. Uh, we have to get better at that because uh, that makes our guys that's in pick and rolls uh, that that makes them a lot lot better. It's harder to trap, and if they do, the corner guy has to pick up the roll guy, and then we got to very good shooter in the corner. So it's a process. Uh, that's a end of a game play uh, that, that, that you can run. Uh, and this is, this is simple. One of the guys should get a shot, the role guy, uh, the, the guard, or the corner guy. Um, how do you feel that <clears throat> CJ has progressed this year um, um, after a big game like this? How do you feel like his season has come uh, so far to this point? Uh, he's grown a lot. Uh, he's grown academically. Um, I think he came in college and he wasn't sure, uh, you, know, you know, he's always known uh, college was going to be tough. Uh, you know, he's a first generation college student and that's, that's big. So, you know, everything he's learned about college, he's leaned on from, from what, whatever, what we kind of told him. And um, he's had to do a lot of hours and a lot of work to, uh, uh, you know, to, to continue to do better and get and uh, do well in school. So we, we thought because of that, some of his conditioning and some of his uh, basketball struggle, uh, we feel that he'll get better. Uh, we want him to get down weight-wise so that he can be more active uh, next year. And so we just been in the whole process of, of, of as we're changing, of continuing to teach them to grow and learn and, and realize that, you know, his activity level has to be really high uh, for him to be successful. And, um, you know, at times he's he's had high activity and he's been better practice-wise. So I, I think he's grown. Um, I had to go uh, a couple of days ago. I went on the uh, Georgia Hoop site and just looked at the top ten guys from last year. And, you know, they, they, they do it a lot of times. Even in Florida, they'll do it. And the other states, the top 10, 15 guys, and what they've done their freshman year. And to realize that, okay, it is an adjustment no matter where you go uh, because, you know, CJ statistically and minute-wise and all was probably right in the uh, upper echelon of what, what, what some of the freshmen were doing. And so we, we have to understand that and realize that he has a lot of growth, but more important, I think he realized uh, where his growth needs to be, and um, he can continue to work hard. Coach, <clears throat> just, um, what was the atmosphere like in the locker room after, after the final buzzer, knowing that that field win after yeah. long No, you know what? Um, as, as Q said, we, and it's tough when you're losing. Uh, I, I stayed up plenty of nights, uh, but I had to make sure once I came to this building that my mentality and my attitude was good, that, that um, I had to make sure that they couldn't get down. I had to be positive uh, but push them at the same time. So the atmosphere was one of, okay, you know, we, found, we got over the hump. Uh, we've had a lot of games like that. Uh, what wears on us, as we've been talking about all year, is, is our size. You know, they got 11 offensive rebounds in the second half. They had four early, ended up with five in the first half, but they didn't get into the last six and a half minutes or something like that. That's how we made that run in the end of the first half. We've done a decent job all year defending. 
Uh, we've done an excellent job defending the three, decent job defending the two, but the reason we haven't been as good defending the two is because we haven't rebounded the basketball, uh, and we've given a lot of second shots. So you look at tonight, they had 16 second shot opportunities, and they shot 43% from the field. And we're trying to get them to understand if we rebound the ball and cut half of those, then we probably hold them under 40 uh, for sure, shooting. And um, that gives you a chance to win. So uh, all we talk about is what it takes to win uh, each game and building it, doing it the right way. Uh, they've had uh, great practices this week, hard practices. And you know they just came into the game. I thought Javi had a really good, um, he's had a really good two and a half weeks where his, his confidence kind of came back uh, and he fought and fought and uh, he had really good practice. And so we ran that play in practice uh, that he hit the three on. So we ran it again in the game, he, he knocked it down and we told him in the timeout, we need him to knock down this shot so we can call a timeout and get our defenders in. Um, if you go back, uh, the FIU game, the Western game, and somewhere else at home, we went with a shooting group on the court, but didn't make the basket. And so we didn't, we couldn't call a timeout and get our defenders back in. And so sometimes I kick myself and say, should I just kept my defenders on? And if we didn't make the shot, at least we had our best chance to get a stop on the other end. But he made the shot. We was able to call a timeout and get our defenders in. Um, and the guy scrapped, uh, you know, all the way. Uh, I expect CJ to continue to get better. Um, I, I expect him to get closer to being a double-double guy uh, where he can play and stay out of foul trouble. Um, so his conditioning, strength and conditioning has to increase. Uh, we've been in games. Uh, we, we've, we've been in games. Um, I, I just think we come up short. I think some of it is We've lost to some better teams. Uh, so the guys that are here, that'll be back here in the future, they got to continue to get better. And it's on us to bring some uh, additional talent to the table uh, so that they can continue to grow, so we can be bigger and longer. That's a, that's a young team, as we told them before the game. Uh, I think it was, it's, it was Coach Gibbons scouting. I think Coach Gibbons said to him. Just understand, you all going to see these guys the next three, four years because they're young also. And we had a chance to beat them at their place. We had the ball up one with two minutes to go, actually a minute 58, and gave DHO turnover, let them get middle twice, and uh, they got offensive rebound put back, and then we tried to hit two home run threes. Uh, we didn't want to try to hit the home run three tonight, and so I was glad that Q drove and, and tried to attack and put some pressure on the defense. Uh, and the officials in those situations. Great. Brown is their best off the dribble score, uh, and, and, and he was good. Uh, you, you go back, um, Jack played uh, Price at Western, played him great. You know, um, late we had to put Jack on the floor, had Justin Massey on him. Justin, he got a couple of shots on him, but Jack made him work the whole game, and he just made a couple of tough plays. Uh, so sometimes Jack has guarded those threes, and he's worked the whole game, and they've been able to make a shot late. So it's good for him to be able to come up with the big defensive plays down the stretch and just continue to battle. Uh, but Jackson give you everything he has. He's probably been 50% to 60% since the Charlotte game when he missed the Charlotte ODU FIU game on the road he missed those three games and when he came back he he hadn't been the same in the games our practice as he had throughout but uh he had a good one tonight so without with no school hopefully he gets a lot of rest tomorrow we have a light one tomorrow and uh hopefully he can play well on Saturday because we need him to he said he's gonna try to practice tomorrow and um uh, see how it feels, and you know, hopefully, can senior night. Uh, uh, it's great 
opportunity. And as I've said before, I said to you all, uh, I know these guys haven't had the success on the court that they would have wanted and maybe everybody would have hoped for, uh, but I don't think you can uh, question how they approached their life on and off the court and their preparation, what they've done in the classroom, all the seniors graduating, all the seniors graduated last year, uh, all the juniors on pace to graduate next year. So they're doing the things on and off the court that, that you will want. It hasn't produced the wins. Um, so we, are, we, we, we want them to know that. We appreciate that. Uh, and uh, they're part of our foundation that we've come in trying to establish. And it's tough having change during your senior year. Uh, and, um, you know, but we appreciate all of them for all the effort that they've given. And hopefully Justin can uh, give it a chance uh, if, if he doesn't think it's going to be too risky uh, for his foot because Justin's going to have a chance to play some professional basketball and we don't want him to have a setback, um, you know, at, at this point because he did uh, on Friday at, at uh, Marshall kind of had a uh, soreness.